watching, hiking and camping. I love to explore Yellowstone, Yellowstone, Yellowstone. <laughs> That's so good noises they make. We are on our way to Cody, Wyoming. In Cody, Wyoming, we are planning on going to the Buffalo Bill Museum. It's like five museums in one. It's like nature, nature and wildlife, art, Buffalo Bill himself, Native Americans, and then guns, of course. Mm. I never go to that. Cool, let's check that out. I'll probably check out the guns. Got two on me all the time. <laughs> um, we're gonna do that, go into a rodeo. I've never been to a rodeo, so take some footage of that. That should be fun. It's like a three hour drive to get there, and we're gonna get back super late tonight. So this will be one, one last fun adventure before I head back home to Los Angeles. Jutting out of the ground. Yeah. Just like the red and the green. Yeah, that's cool. This is the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. It was opened in a log cabin in 1927 and started out as a memorial to Buffalo Bill and the early pioneers of the American West. Since then, it has added museums about natural history, the Plains Indians, Western art, and firearms. This place shares the epic stories of Yellowstone and the American West together in one place for one price. Currently $22 for an adult. But who was Buffalo Bill? I'm about to take the back train. Looking through the eyes of the members of the West, I have Born in 1846, William F. Buffalo Bill Cody served as a scout for the Union Army during the last years of the American Civil War. He would later be employed as a civilian scout and guide for the 5th Cavalry. After the Civil War, Cody hunted buffalo for the Kansas Pacific Railroad, earning his nickname Buffalo Bill and his reputation as an expert shot. Since Cody was such an excellent guide, he would take visiting dignitaries and U.S. generals on lavish hunting trips. During this time, magazines were published that romanticized the exploits of Wild West figures like Buffalo Bill. In 1872, dime novel writer Ned Buntling persuaded Cody to portray himself on stage. This is where Cody first fell in love with show business. In the summer of 1876, during the height of the Plains Indian War with the U.S., Cody returned to the prairies to scout for the 5th Cavalry. Just three weeks after Custer and the 7th Cavalry were defeated at the Battle of Little Bighorn, Cody's regiment intercepted a band of Cheyenne warriors. Buffalo Bill fought in this battle, killed a Cheyenne, and scalped him, and then started a play based on that. What a character. 
It says it blurred the lines between fact and fiction and his kind of lore and who he actually was. In 1883, Cody created what would become Buffalo Bill's Wild West, a grand performance that propelled him to fortune and worldwide fame. His fame and credibility as a westerner lent star appeal and an aura of authenticity. Most importantly, Cody gave the show a dramatic narrative structure. Features such as the Pony Express, the Wagon Train, or the Attack on the Stagecoach recreated specific and well-known events. Skill acts such as sharpshooting, wing shooting, roping, and riding not only showcased star performers, the show's narration linked those skills to survival in the frontier west. The Wild West was staged in one form or another for 30 years, playing to enthusiastic crowds throughout the United States and even Europe. By the turn of the 20th century, William F. Cody was arguably the most famous American in the world. No one symbolized the West for Americans and Europeans better than Buffalo Bill. Taking advantage of his celebrity status, Cody was an early advocate of women's suffrage and the fair treatment of American Indians. This is the Plains Indian Museum. The first Plains Indian collection was added in 1969, and the full museum was dedicated in 1979, then reinstalled in 2000. The Plains Indian Museum educates and advances knowledge about living American Indian cultures their histories, art, spirituality, and traditions for current and future generations. The Plains Indian Lodge, or teepee, is one of the most practical shelters ever invented. It is easy to put up and take down and is resistant to wind and rain. A lodge typically faces east so the occupants can greet the morning sun. We women had our children to care for, meat to cook and to dry, robes to dress, skins to tan, clothes, lodges, and moccasins to make. We not only pitched the lodges, but took them down and packed the horses and the travoy when we moved camp. We were busy, especially when we were going to move. I loved to move, even after I was a married woman with children to take care of. Moving made me happy. Art was integral to men's lives as warriors and hunters. Visionary experiences prepared men for war and often inspired the designs of the shields and other equipment. Men also recorded their exploits in war and hunting, as well as important tribal events. For all Plains Indian people, the buffalo was the center of their economic, cultural, and spiritual practices. Tribes preserved their spiritual connections to the buffalo through prayers, rituals, and ceremonies. Horn bonnet wearers communicated with the buffalo and had special powers related to the animal which was given to them through visions or dreams. A man's prestige was based on his accomplishments as a warrior and hunter. Plains Indians traditionally waged war in defense or retaliation against enemy attacks to preserve and expand hunting territories and to capture horses, which were essential for hunting and an indication of wealth. Important. We always pick it up. The sun that comes up. We know the power of the sun because it brings with it light. It's an energy force that makes all things. I'm not exactly sure what this structure is called, but if you know, please write it in the comments. My grandchildren here. Yeah. You heard her say that number and she's learning words. This is all Save our indigenous sisters. 96%. On some reservations, the number of sexual violence against Native women committed by non-Natives. 67%. The number of cases between 2005 and 2009 that U.S. attorneys declined to prosecute of Native community matters including sexual abuse. 5,712. The number of known incidents of missing and murdered Native American and Alaskan Native women of 2016. Only 116 cases were logged into the Department of Justice database. What follows is a history of encounters the Plains Indians had with Europeans and Americans. 
Trade, disease, missionaries, warfare. Listen well what I have to say. Think of your wives, children, brothers, sisters, friends, are all dead or dying, caused by those dogs, the whites. Smallpox, an American fur company steamboat, brought the disease to Mandan villages on the Missouri River. In the next few weeks, over 10,000 people died, including 90% of the Mandan and Hidatsa populations. The Homestead Act encouraged settlement on Indian lands by granting settlers 160-acre parcels of land at $1.25 an acre. The 3rd Colorado Cavalry under Colonel John M. Shivington killed over 160 Cheyenne and Arapaho, mostly women and children, in an attack on Black Kettle's peaceful camp along Sand Creek. Loss of lands. Destruction of buffalo. Reservations. A reservation ration ticket and bag. Boarding schools. Wounded knee. Plains Indian artists create art that honors ancestral creativity and ingenuity, celebrates cultural ideals and tribal identity, and transcends time and place. To the west and the north lies the country of the enemy. In all those lands I have walked without fear of harm. O oh, my friends, in them all I have won the right to wear the warrior's badge of victory. Song of the Warrior, Lakota, Sioux. The Draper Natural History Museum. This place was pretty cool. Look at that wolf. A log cabin. Some Hall of Fame thing. Oh, this was really cool. It looks something like this. Doesn't exactly help you sleep at night, does it? <laughs> Fortunately, it's not ready to blow just yet. While the Yellowstone supervolcano will erupt eventually, an imminent eruption is highly unlikely. If we were to have a, another big eruption, it would affect a large area of the order, several states. But as I said, that probability. This was a cute little area. Lots of animals and facts and nature info. I was running low on time, so I had to move through here real quick. The Cody Firearms Museum houses the most comprehensive collection of American firearms in the world. To date, the museum has over 7,000 firearms with more than 30,000 firearms related artifacts. In 1980, the first Winchester collection was installed, then in 1991, the Cody Firearms Museum was dedicated and open to the public. Finally, in 2019, the museum was redesigned and reinstalled. This was pretty cool. They show you the different types of guns and how they work. Here you've got bolt action, semi-automatic, and lever action. This was a cool simulation gun range as well as four rules of gun safety to the right. Just tons and tons of guns. And more and more guns. If you are a gun nut, you will love this place. Whitney Western Art Museum. Lots of pretty paintings and sculptures here. That was a cool sculpture. And painting. I like this one a lot and thought it was funny. See the resist in the background. Here's a little note from the creator. Well, there you have it. That was the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. Now we are walking around downtown Cody, which is named after, you guessed it, William F. Buffalo Bill Cody. We walked by this show, seemed pretty cool. Not sure exactly what it is. We ended up stopping at the famous Irma Hotel, where Buffalo Bill once stayed and ate. Lots of good food. I'm pretty sure I had the bison burger. It was delicious. Here we go to the rodeo. This was not my first rodeo, only that it was. 
So I was very excited and very curious as to what they're actually like. So friends, I'd ask that you to move down and bow your heads and join me in prayer. Our Western way of life has a lot of neat things in it, in my opinion. 9-11 was a beautiful day until those planes lost their way. Our first responders went rushing in, only to never be seen again. You ask me why we stand today? Because we love the USA.
see Cookie get rocked around in that barrel, but it was a fantastic day trip to Cody, Wyoming. Cody is such a great place to visit, especially if you're fascinated with the American West. There is so much to see at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West that you could honestly spend the whole day there. The rodeo was really cool, and Cody Stampede seems like the place to see a rodeo. I still have one more video to edit about my favorite places in Yellowstone. Hopefully I will get that done later this year. Life has just been crazy busy recently. Also, if everything goes according to plan, I'm going back to Yellowstone in Montana in February of 2023. Becca and I are gonna go skiing, snowshoeing, and do a bunch of other winter activities. It will be a completely different adventure this time. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss those upcoming videos. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.